I was listening to that interview with Mia Khalifa, and she actually didn't seem to talk about how her experience specifically in porn was bad, like on set. She even talked about how it was very professional and how her coworkers, you know, the guys that she worked with treated her really well. What she seemed to really take issue with was how her life changed afterwards and how people saw her afterwards and mm-hmm. how much attention she got and how the stigma followed her. Right. So – a part, I guess, maybe this is a little too idealistic, but for me, rather than maybe change the porn itself, and obviously there's a lot of things that need to change, and things are changing. Like agencies are becoming better and more reputable. Those smaller, shitty agents, they definitely exist, but they're kind of being pushed out. Social media has given women a voice, and where now they can kind of call out bad seeds and they can kind of right. band together and that kind of thing. But like for me, ideally, I would love to see the way the world sees porn change. That would be a beautiful thing. And, and I you think know that what? would just make everyone's lives better. But I think people already do see the beauty in porn and yeah. they do love it because true. it's being consumed by billions and billions and billions of people. Mm-hmm. So they do love it. They do appreciate it. It's just that they themselves are too insecure to admit that this is something they like. So it, it, the people that are doing the shaming – have watched the movies. Yeah. That's, you know, and the shaming part really freaks me out these days. I don't personally initially read any of my emails. Mm-hmm. I don't read my Twitter following or Twitter. I don't read my Instagram. My, my boyfriend does it first and mm-hmm. deletes anything that's going to upset me. Mm-hmm. Cause I can have a thousand people say something nice about me and you and get that one, one asshole yeah. and you're like, yeah, what? I like my baby toe. I thought it was really pretty, you know? (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand. But, I mean, when it starts to get where girls begin to commit suicide over it, those, again, are the girls that should not have gotten into it in the first place. And shame on all the f***s who are cowards who would, who uh, through the internet only will, will shame people, you know? Yeah. yeah, and the problem is that the internet, you know, has given everybody a soapbox, and it's given yeah. everybody the ability to communicate with their favorite star. And you know, you shouldn't necessarily have to hear everybody's f-ing personal opinion. Exactly. You know, why do you have to? Why do you have to absorb everybody else's shame and everybody else's anger? Exactly. And that's what you get when you become a celebrity online. It. it- it's ridiculous. It's, it's very, very difficult. And I am so lucky that I don't see it because I know they come in. I know that they're there. Mm-hmm. I know that, you know, there's things that are just mean. Yeah. Um, but I'm I'm really lucky. I don't see any of it. So I just, Are you like so glad that you were a star in the time before the internet came along and before social media and all this stuff? I am so grateful that I was a star and that I was young before there were cell phones Mm -hmm. and everybody taping everything because I was, I was just a wild child. I remember there was, you know, I became, once I became famous, uh, clubs would, would contact me and ask, invite me to their club, comp me a bottle of champagne and bring me in. Mm -hmm. So I went to this club one night and they comp me a bottle of champagne and I brought five or six of my girlfriends, including Gina Fine. And I'm out there. Gina Fine and I are dancing. We're both wearing skirts. We both end up eating each other's pussies on the dance floor. Mm -hmm. Okay. We were asked to leave and I refused until I finished my champagne. Um, (laughs) But had there been cell phones, had there been social media, I did a lot. There are so many things in stripping. You know, I mean, you know that people are taking pictures of you when you're stripping. I, I toured for 13 years and there's always that time where you're doing that stupid underbite. Mm-hmm. When you're up, and that's the photo that you get. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. It's like how the paparazzi looks for the worst photo of whatever celebrity oh, they're going after, and they post that. I have some oh. asshole that continually keeps changing my Wikipedia photos. I uh, <laughs> gained, I gained some weight uh, a few years ago, and I've lost it all. But I was a size twelve, and uh-huh. now I'm a four again. But a twelve was really big for me at five yeah. foot tall, and every. Time I go back on there, I'll have friends change it because they won't let me change it. Mm-hmm. 
and they put the fat pictures back up. I'm like, who is doing this? Why? I don't look like that. It's so unfair. Oh, <laughs> uh, I know. It's it's like And that bothers me. So yeah. even that little bit. So I am so grateful to have been around at the time when we we would get a script and it would be 120 pages and on page nine it would go sex scene. So we made real movies with sex dispersed within it. Mm -hmm. And they were fabulous. The Mm -hmm. lighting sucked and it was very hairy time, but you know, (laughs) what are you going to (laughs) do? 